Well, hello everyone, and welcome to our November detour here at Movable Feast. Uh, it's a pleasure to be inside this historic house that has been adaptively reused for a wonderful purpose of helping those who are less fortunate than uh, some of us. Um, I'm Jackson Osborne, I'm the Community Outreach uh, Manager for the Blue Gas Trust. All of our detours are free and open to the public. We don't receive any local or federal funding, so to our donors out there, thank you so much for your support. Amen. Um, it's a great day to be here, um, especially today as a reminder that if you want to do good, you've got to do it yourself. So I'm not going to say much more, and I'm going to turn it over to Terry, who runs this fantastic organization and has provided us with a wonderful banquet of food. Yes. Go, Terry. Could you do any research of the building and what it was just, built? Just when it was built, but we <laughs> wanted to focus on mission. <laughs> oh, mission? Well, yeah. Mobile Feast, uh, we prepare and deliver a meal five days a week. People here in Bay County with AIDS are on hospice. Also to deliver to the caregiver and dependent children in the home. Uh, today we've delivered about uh, 130 meals uh, throughout Lexington. And, and that uh, truck out there, or did you still get cars? Uh, we, volunteers do it in the Volunteers, okay. Yeah, sometimes I'm in that man out there doing yeah. it when they, we don't have enough volunteers. That's a lot. We always do volunteers. Um, but yeah, this building has been, how, how old is the building? Over a hundred. Yeah, I was told it was built in 1893 as a grocery store. Now, it's like, like a corner when, grocery store. When we moved in, this uh, well, when we bought the building, not when we moved in, this whole wall here uh, was straight back. This was a restaurant over here called Nanny's Soul Food, and over there was three apartments, uh, two efficiency downstairs, one one back here, one up front. And then an apartment upstairs where my office is now. You're all free to go all through the building however you want to go. Um, what else you need to know? What you told us is great. I think we can. Oh, just... that's the redo. Oh, the redo. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm like in I charge said, here. <laughs> <laughs> See, you forgot about Bob. <laughs> like I said, when we moved in in 2010, we bought it in 2009, we moved in in 2010, uh, we had redone it so that it could be a restaurant. Or a, a, not a restaurant again, but for a, use our purposes. Uh, it, that was a task because it was a mess uh, at the time. I thought one thing we've been looking at buildings. And I thought one great thing about getting a restaurant, the vent hood's already here because that's expensive to put yeah, in. It is. Well, after we got in here and I looked under the vent hood, there was nothing under it. <laughs> it was just a fake hood that was hanging there. So we still had to buy the vent hood. Uh, and catch on fire easy if they're old, because people haven't cleaned them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we uh, we got it ready to move in. Uh, it looked nice, but then uh, a couple years ago, uh, right after the pandemic, we got uh, one of those Build Back Better grants. <laughs> uh, oh, good. So that we could get, we put about $300,000 into redoing it again. So yeah. it's all new floors. All new windows, uh, countertops. New, there's a new uh, oven back there. Uh, new new tables. Basement. Yeah, and we refinished the basement so we could use it for storage. Oh really? Wow. The, this front room up here, that on this other side, that used to be an efficiency apartment, okay. uh, was used to store just stuff that we only use like once a year for fundraisers or stuff like that. And it was taking up space, and we didn't have a walk-in cooler, so I wanted to. That was our storage space. So I wanted a walk-in cooler. We got that. We redid the basement so all that bunch of your stuff could be going down, and then food storage could go up in front. I think uh, uh, you got sleigh bells coming up too, right? Yes, we do. Uh, sleigh bells is a fundraiser. It's our largest fundraiser of the year, uh, next to uh, Sunday salons. Uh, but it's a uh, was previously called Twelve Divas of Christmas. We re we did it this year to Slay Bells, spelled S L A Y Bells. Uh, it's still it. a drag show, but more of a variety show this year. Uh, live with a uh, comedian, uh, musicians, uh, and the drag show. On Main Street? Lyric Theater. Oh, it's a lyric. Cool. Sunday, December 8th. You got something? You can hand it out something for that? Uh, no, I don't have that information right, yeah. to hand out. That's okay. We'll share it with you. He just did okay. a little piece on the Lexington yeah. website. 
Sunday? Yeah, you go to the website. You can get tickets right there. Hey, a Sunday or Monday or Tuesday? It's a Sunday afternoon. Sunday, okay. Uh, we always have um, celebrities uh, along with regular drag queens do it. Last year, Dan Wu, the high school year, was in drag. Great. Yeah. Absolutely great. Uh, this year we have uh, Deborah Hensley, mm -hmm. uh, the insurance agent, mm -hmm. and used to be city council person. She's everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she's doing drag for us this year, uh, along with Wally Call, the artist. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it'll be fun. It will be. Wonderful. Well, uh, thank you so much, Terry, sure. and for opening this place up. And I think we're ready to move around and let me, let, me okay, you, let, let me tell you a little bit about how our money works. Let's talk about money. Money. <laughs> we, we, we depend on donations just like you guys. Mm -hmm. so about 60 or 65 percent of our funding is done through grants, and then the rest of it we do with fundraising. Uh, we have two very large fundraisers each year. One is the show at the Lyric at Christmas, and then in September we do September salons, and that's three Sundays where we uh, have people in the community who have some fantastic house with the fantastic art, and they'll host a salon on a Sunday afternoon, and then we have guest uh, musicians or guest uh, authors that come and speak. Uh, it's fantastic. And uh, people people are always calling, when do the tickets go on sale? But Movable mm -hmm. Feast, we feed between 130 to 150 <coughs> people five nights a week. And then some people are low income enough they qualify for a cold lunch the next day. And this place operates on a budget of less than $300,000 a year. I mean, we are shoestring budget. What do they do on the other two days? You do five nights a week. Most, most, most people go to, can get groceries and so forth. Oh, okay. If we know that they cannot get out of the house, we do have uh, the possibility of taking them a grocery bag. But we also have a lot of clients who are uh, women with, and women with children. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we feed the children as well. Oh, sure. Oh, my goodness, yes. And if we have uh, a client that has a caregiver that has to stay home with them, we feed the caregiver, too. Amen. So we have four routes every night. So that's four volunteers that come and drive their own vehicles. And the routes go in all four directions from here in Fayette County. So, is it like, do you prefer just monetary or do you prefer people to donate like canned goods or? Uh, I'll speak to that. Uh, canned goods are not very useful to us mm -hmm. uh, because we use big number 300 cans. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and so, we have to have a lot, a lot of those little cans like you can get at the grocery store. Yeah. Uh, and it takes a lot of manpower to open that many cans and feed that many people. Yeah. Uh, so, and and uh, we can buy uh, through uh, wholesalers cheaper uh, than you could. So the money is works much better. Money, money, money. Yeah. Money, money. Basically, those giant cans of sauerkraut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and, uh, be because because people with living with HIV have a problem keeping weight on, our meals are very high calorie. They get a, a hot meal, cold salad, and a dessert every night. And then some of them qualify for cold lunch. We do low income hospice patients also. And uh, I've been driving around here on Friday nights now for 14 years. And there are three people on my route that have been there since the first time I started. And it's so fun to say, oh gosh, we kept them alive. Yeah. yeah. Or when the little kids start going through puberty and they get a little bit chubby, I'm like, oh, we did that. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That That's awesome. Good. We still have client number one on our books from 1998 when we started. Wow. She's still plugging along. Oh, we deliver it to low-income hospice. We developed a relationship with hospice because at one time our clients were synonymous with hospice clients. And uh, but as people with HIV AIDS started living longer, then they were all hospice clients as well. And hospice told us that they didn't have anybody to refer indigent people to to get food. Would we consider taking uh, referrals from hospice for uh, food also? 
and uh, so we made that part of our mission. And, uh, but hospice clients tend to be a smaller part of our clients, and uh, they, of course, tend to not live long. And then from a historic perspective, if you go in the basement, the back half is an old rock basement, mm. and that wall on the angle there has a huge foundation under it. So that probably was the chimney that worked for the stove. They probably had a coal stove at first to cook in here. Well, it was the chimney. We, it is. we, we covered it up when we moved in. Um, so was there a house over here first and they added on the grocery on the corner? Or was it all built at the same time? Because mm -hmm. it's real typical for the grocery to be added on to the corner. The city papers tell you about that? The city you, records? You can go back into the, uh, the old maps and mm -hmm. see what it looks like as the neighborhoods filled in back from Broadway. You can see all the little shotgun houses and so forth. But there were no building permits then? I wouldn't think so. I don't think there's building that's, permits. That's there. a question for Jack. <laughs> question for Zach. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there weren't any in the rural area. This no. one's not rural then. No, you're not going to find building but all of the maps are on our back page on our website. Okay. Well, actually, this was kind of rural. Oh, was it? Because it started filling out. Well, yeah. then, you, then if it was rural, you um, didn't have to get those. The first subdivision was the Fayette Park. Kincaid County mm -hmm. yeah, was right over here behind us. Oh, yeah, the yeah. race track was not far from here. Yeah, you had all of the wealthy people living in the big houses, yeah. and yeah. then the people that worked for them all lived in the shotgun houses back home. Well, the way they did that uh, further out rural, when they somebody would buy out like a, a lot of land, they would build on the first level, then they live in it, and then they would take whatever okay. amount of time it took to make the second level or the add-on or whatever. But there was some, that, that didn't there was no building permits necessary. But if this was rural, then they could have done it that way here. But too. this is the original lunch counter for the soul food restaurant. It had a formica top on it, and this is the brand new. How much? Steel top cost. Uh, this is $12,000. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It actually works as an assembly line for doing the meals and bagging the meals. Oh, I'll yeah. tell you one last, last perfect, secret and then I'll shut up. Yeah. Uh, well, was it during COVID two or three years ago? Our oh. oh. And it shot through the window right oh. here. And we had this many two weeks. Oh. So if you look over here on the side, the bullet hole is still here. Oh inside my gosh. Ah. Oh. It still That's works. It's just got a bullet hole. <laughs> that happened on Christmas That's Day. Crazy. Christmas Day. Oh. <laughs> Shoot your eye out. Oh. <laughs> it, was on, it was on the news that. And then I come in here. We, this, uh, we had these windows replaced with energy efficient, but it had one of those really thick plate glass windows. And it just made a hole in the window. But they were shooting at each other, not you necessarily. I mean, not here necessarily. Oh, yeah, but the guy that was in here cooking, he'd run to the back because he heard it all going on and they were going down the street. Of course. Mm -hmm. There was another uh, incident that happened where somebody crawled through an old cold chute and, and spent all night in the basement tearing out all of the copper oh, plumbing wow, and flooded yeah. the entire Didn't basement. bother to turn anything oh. off. It just was running out. Yeah. And he was stacking it in the yard behind us. And he got out of here before y'all knew it. With the copper. They saw him come crawling out because it, the alarm kept going off. Oh. The interiors yeah. were close and he was coming over to check. Well, he, oh, there wasn't an alarm in the basement, but he decided he was going to come up. Uh, when he came upstairs. When he came upstairs, the alarm caught him. And I, so then he took off. And then I came over, but went through it with the cops. But he was actually still here. He was hiding in the basement at that time. We left, no sooner got home, the alarm goes off again. <laughs> <laughs> and come back over here and then. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Somebody sat in the car up there, saw him come out. Of, no, come he, out got, of he got away, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he got away. Oh, he got away. But he had all kinds of stuff stacked in that backyard ready to, to liquidate. <laughs> yeah, lots of extension ladders and <laughs> other people. Uh, yeah. oh, stuff he got from water. other places. <laughs> going down the like street. He was stockpiling it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, but I was telling Jackson that they, it ran on the news. And they came over here and, you know, they had footage and everything. We started getting checks. Oh, oh yeah, that was nice. <laughs>
<laughs> alternate, I mean, that alternate fundraising plan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, got to eat food. Yeah, yeah, eat food. Well, eat, walk around, look at everything. Let's have a everything. couple of things. Basement's open, the upstairs yeah. is open. For the benefit of our viewers, will you let us know your website? Website is feastlex.org. Perfect. All right, let's have a look around. Plenty of silverware to talk. I know. Plenty of impossible oh, okay I was getting ready to say it's impossible to convey on video but I am five foot eight and I was barely clearing those rafters I would put them at maybe five ten Yeah. 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 Yeah.